Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another deck tech. <clears throat> so tonight, I'm going to bring you one of the more hated decks of the end of the Jade era. As soon as you see the stronghold, you probably know. Uh, the deck was called uh, Bash, which stood for uh, Broken Ass Spirit Arm. Um, now, I have to fix this again. Just a hair. Okay. So the stronghold, Shrine of the Spirits, um, was a zero province strength, four gold producing, six starting honor. Uh, but you can begin the game with six provinces. Um, you, uh, you can't play events in your deck because they don't resolve. Um, followers, your human followers can the spirit trait. During your end phase, you can draw an additional fate card and then discard a card from your hand, and you cannot achieve an enlightenment victory. Um, so typically, um, since you can't play enlightenment and you can't play events, honor was the um, most interesting way, I guess, to play it. <coughs> Six provinces also has something to do with that. Um, and for those of you who have not ever seen this card, um, this card is a, a uh, the Imperial Favor, which was, this was printed in Inquest magazine in the 90s, and it has all four of the abilities of the Imperial Favor at the time, which was uh, limited, um, uh, discard, uh, discard the Imperial Favor to draw a fake card, uh, open, discard it to restore a dishonorable personality to honorable status, um, battle, Send home any personality. Um, about as it moves, you may uh, you can take this um, action even in a battle where you have no units. And reaction, you can prevent one loss of family honor. And the back of the card has a quote from Doge, uh, Doshi Sizue. Um, all right, <clears throat> so. Holdings, we were playing uh, three cup. We we're going to play three copies of Shrine of the Dead. It's a three for two, but if you're paying for a spirit personality or follower, it's a three for four. Um, um, playing the uh, Hero Medulio. Um, so, for. Almost everybody in the deck, this was a f uh, cost four and produced, f or it cost four and it produced three gold, or it reduced the gold cost of a samurai by four. Uh, we had Merchant's Caravan. <coughs> oh, 
gonna pull all the better go back through here and resort this because I've been shuffling this one up quite a bit. So we had a play set of small farms, and then we had a play set of merchant caravans. Uh, merchant caravan was pretty well synonymous with <coughs> almost every deck <laughs> in the format uh, during the time period of. Uh, the first six years of the game. Uh, this this originally came out in Forbidden Knowledge and was reprinted in uh, the Battle of Beden's Pass. So essentially <clears throat> you tap and discard a fake card to produce gold equal to the focus value. <clears throat> Alright. So the reason that we're playing this deck and the reason it's called broken ass spirit honor is because we're playing three copies of <coughs> we're playing three copies of Shinsei Shrine um, so Shinsei Shrine the original printing was Crimson and Jade um, it's a region you do not refill the province which is fine. Um, you gain two honor at the during the uh, the start of your end phase while this card's in play. So you're running three copies of that. And then you're running three copies of Exile's Road. And if I remember correctly, this was from Honor Bound. Uh, when Exile's Road enters play, target region in play that's not a unique region. It uh, permanently becomes an exact duplicate of the region except for the name. Um, so the only bad part is, is if you don't hit a Sensei Shrine first, this is basically blank. Um, <clears throat> so potentially you would have up to six Sensei Shrines. That's 12 honor. Now obviously Um, that's a little ridiculous. Alright, so let's go over the personality base. Um, <clears throat> so go over the boxables that gain you honor first. So, uh, as far as personalities in your clan, typically um, you had to um, Most of the major clans had a specific type. Um, crab, crane, dragon, etc. Um, the uh, ninja clan had to have anybody, you could put anybody on their deck with a ninja keyword. Um, monk, or Brotherhood of Sensei used Monk. Naga uh, used Naga. Um, Taturi's army used Taturi's army. <clears throat> um, the spirits used the spirit trait. So anybody with a spirit trait, um, you could use in clan discount or you could claim them. So 
um, Isao is a boxable spirit shukinja. And it's just two personal water, but uh, it's cheap and relevant. And then you have uh, Bayushi uh, Miharu, um, who is um, basically a, a spirit duelist um, that has three base personal water. Now, neither, both of these can be played off all of the holdings except small farm, obviously. Um, So, <clears throat> this next one was very important for the defensive strategy. Um, Mia Tosonu. Um, so, its battle ability is uh, you, you bow him to send home uh, him and one of, uh, send one of your units and one opposing unit with lower total force. Then you unit you bow it. Uh, then your unit home bow. It. So, <clears throat> so basically, you can um, um, this is sort of send home because they don't have to attack very hard. It could be you know because it's a zero profit strength, um, but also has three base personal honor. Other five gold personality is a Koto Kao. Um, so this has a non -honor, nine honor requirement, but more than likely um, one proclaim and a and a sensei shrine or a couple sensei shrines is probably going to get you there. Um, yeah, it's very, uh, very useful for um, the uh, <clears throat> the spirit mirror match. Um, all right. Our sixes. Uh, our next one is Togashi Mio. Um, so, Mio is one of those personalities that's hard to get out of the battle. Um, when a card or stronghold effect uh, is moving him out of battle, he can just straight up negate it. Um, so, he can make it difficult for your opponent to um, uh, get rid of your presence if necessary. We're running three copies of him. Uh, and now our last normal personality is um, Adi Gokun. Um, so gives you some cavalry presence. Um, it has a, um, a kill action. Uh, it has a range 2 or a range 5 if it's hitting the Shadowlands card and 3 personal honor. The last card in the other, uh, we got two other cards. Um, this guy was pretty well hated. Um, so this is a uh, Sako Sagoten. Um, and Sagoten was uh, from the expansion Fire and Shadow. Um, so, 
this was an amazing mechanic to catch up to other honor runners but it was also very useful in the matches against dishonor uh, so and the fact that he's in clan for you uh, means that you can buy him for four if you want to or proclaim him and then <coughs> the um, One of the more interesting uh, characters, of course, the Ki the Kiden, um, is um, um, has a uh, two chi. You have to have fifteen honor to bring it to play. Has five personal honor, but personalities with a personal honor of zero, four, or five may not attack provinces while Kirin is unbowed and honorable. Uh, he shuts down a lot of decks. Uh, he shuts down the high honor decks uh, and he shuts down the low honor decks and the Shadowlands. That's what he is there for. So that is the fate or the dynasty side. Yep. Stand corrected. I forgot a couple of guys. Um, so I think I'm missing a couple of cards uh, that I couldn't find. Uh, so I'm running a couple of Oni no Peckle. Uh, now, it's dangerous to run those. Uh, there is zero one, a zero one um, three gold, three personal honor. Uh, gain three honor when it enters play and limited you bow it to gain an honor which super cheap really effective um, but if Peckle is destroyed you have to lose 10 honor um, so there are certain matchups where you know you're gonna see cards like Colette Assassin etc um, and easy ways to pick this guy off you want to make sure you just discard this that's not worry about it um, I don't remember what the original cards were that should be in this slot. I'd have to go back and look at my notes. Uh, but uh, this was a cheap side in um, for the deck. All right, now let's go to the fate side. And I'm gonna have to sort this.
where my deck is. Alright. All right. Um, so many of you in the um, newer players before the CCG ended remember a card called an honored guest. Um, honored guest was ridiculously good. So uh, remember what you have seen. Uh, if I remember, this is also from Honor Bound or Ambition's Death. I don't remember which of the two, uh, but you can pick two. When bringing a personality into play with no clan affiliation, gain honor equal to the personality's personal honor. Now, in this deck, that's the Pony No Peckle, which basically means you're gaining six honor for five gold. Again, another reason that I decided to put it in the deck. And then, um, Key Red. Now, you could triple react off key run and gain 15 honor so um yeah um and you'd be paying six gold for that because they're two gold each um so mostly what you're trying to do is stave off your opponent protect your um uh protect your shinshi shrines because um well, I should say, you're not only <coughs> uh, protect your non sensory shrines because um, eventually uh, you want to make sure you're gaining enough honor to win the game. Um, <coughs> so um, we are running Wedge. Um, which, you know, doubles one of their, you know, their power. Um, and just trying to help uh, your force because you're not running any followers with this deck. Um, we have block supply line. Obviously, this is a standard in defensive honor decks. Um, this is another one that's a lot of people probably recognize from Ivory. Uh, soul, uh, soul sacrifice. Uh, one of your samurai in this battle with over two personal honor sends home an opposing unit. The samurai permanently gains undead and shadow light trait. Um, so, uh, a lot of your personality is the three personal honor, and most of those, uh, most of the important ones are samurai. So, uh, this is another good sent home. Uh, obviously, this requires presence. All your three personal honor dudes. Um, here's another uh, reason uh, that you're um, playing these while defending. This in uh, strength purity. Uh, personality with three or greater personal honor. Gains plus three force, plus three chi until end of the turn. Obviously that with Wedge is really good. Um, this card defined a, a meta, and this card was expensive as crap during those days. Fall on your knees. Play uh, this card when a player plays a reaction during battle. Cancel the reaction. Um, so it's like, I'm going to range attack and kill your personality. I'll ca play feign death. I'll fall, fall on your knees. So, really, really good. Uh, this was a staple. Uh, return for training. Um, this was reprinted in Diamond and maybe in Lotus. Uh, but it was a really good send home. Uh, send home a human personality in the battle with the lowest personal honor. You choose in the case of a tie without bowing the personality. Um, 
so it doesn't target non-humans. But in every other matchup, uh, as long as your guys had equal personal honor, you could choose to send one of them home. Um, <clears throat> and you could even send your guys home if you needed to as an, as an escape. <clears throat> uh, so, um, here we see uh, more terrains. Uh, entrapping terrain is a pretty standard terrain for the day. Um, and when this tank uh, terrain resolves, uh, the battle ends without resolution. All units go home unbowed. And then Flooded Pass, which you may have seen in a previous video, um, can be played without presence. So, if you don't know, in L5R, uh, to play an action at a battle, you have to have uh, basically a unit there to carry out the action. Um, flooded Pass is one of those that's you don't need because it's an act of nature. Um, but it gives your province plus two strength for each attacking unit. Um, sometimes that's not enough with a zero province strength, but... Alright. Um, more... T uh, Um, more ways to stifle the incoming um, the incoming attacks uh, to do what we must um, this was mostly a crane staple um, which uh, <coughs> I'll read it uh, choose one of your units destroy that unit and anyone opposing unit with total force less than or equal to the force of this unit Plus your personality's personal honor, um, and add two to the force of this action if it's being performed by a crane. Now in this deck we don't have any cranes, um, but it's basically <clears throat> I blow up my guy to blow up your guy, and that's another reason you're running strength of purity uh, and wedge because then you can just. Um, blow him up to blow up the other unit. Um, avoid fates. So this is vitally important. Uh, avoid fate was sort of like a, um, a way to pause an event and keep it from resolving at that moment. This is particularly useful to stop um, cards like Ashes Shadow Falls which presents pretty prevents all honor gains um, for two turns um, in time of war uh, time of the void all of those all of those very important ones that you want to stop um, winter warfare anything that would be a detriment to your um, win condition um, you play three because you absolutely want to see this when you need it <clears throat> All right, more in the defensive actions. Um, flattery, this is another one yet you don't need presence for. You can play this and discard uh, number of cards from your hand equal uh, where total focus value is equal to or greater than the attacking army's uh, force to send them home unbowed. And you can play this presentless. Uh, this one was one that was in the deck list, and I will be honest, I'm not 100% sold on this one. Um, people that played during Emperor uh, will remember this card, Footstep of Madness. Um, reaction. When an action is being taken from a stronghold, you may pay this card's gold cost, which is equal to the stronghold's gold production. Cancel the action and the action is considered to be be used. Um, now, I'll be honest, there were some very good strongholds um, 
back in the day. Um, and this was another thing with L5R is you, um, you had to put your, um, your meta cards uh, in your deck. Um, and you didn't get the chance to sideboard uh, before match. Uh, and it was best of one. So uh, this is one of those cards <clears throat> that might have been <laughs> used for that for that reason. Uh, running two of those. Uh, we are running his most favorite. Now this is a unique strategy. Select winning personalities, gain five honor. The personality is now your tie to the imperial line. That's what I love about these old cards, the flavor. Uh, if the personality is destroyed for any reason, lose 10 honor. This card remains in play until the personality leaves play. Um, so, I'll typically only play this card if it's going to cross me to cross me over to 40 honor. Uh, and I'm very selective about when I play this because Colette Assassin was played back in the day. Um, and so it was dueling, and you didn't want to get your guy stuck in either situation. And then the last regular card in the deck is Copy of Ring of the Void. Because your hand ends up being empty a lot of the times, blowing through stuff and being able to refill it, it was fantastic. Now, the original deck ran... Um, we're in senseis, and the senseis originally, um, and I'll even take it out of the sleeves so you guys can see. Originally, they were fate backed. Also, at the pre-international um, Olympic Committee lawsuit back. Uh, that's a long story. I won't go into that here. But in, in any event, uh, before before. When you revealed your stronghold, after you revealed your stronghold, you could search your fate deck for any one sensei um, and attach it to your stronghold, bas uh, basically play it, and um, that was your stronghold for the game. Uh, so Suppin Sensei was uh, an all-clan sensei. Uh, you cannot take actions that would cause honor losses for other players. Your honor losses and gains cannot be changed, redirected, or copied. So basically, this stopped players from doing um, crazy stuff, stealing your honor gains, um, which um, definitely could have happened. The Wind's Truth is is one of the cards that was played uh, played a lot. Um, So, none of your cards cause an honor loss, directly cause an honor loss. Uh, you're trying to honor, honor rocket, if you will. All right. So that is Bash. Um, it was <clears throat> obviously this 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 was very late in the Jade Arc because. This was War of the Spirits, which was originally named the Spirit Wars. Um, and it was the last set before Gold Edition. Um, and then after Gold Edition, well, there was a long pause and then Gold Edition, so... Um, But that's a story for another time. Um, come back for more deck techs um, as I go through my collection and build more decks. You're going to see deck techs, and uh, I'll explain the era and everything going on. So um, stay tuned. Until next time, there is no escape from the tiger.